All right, guys. Hey, thanks for joining me. Good morning. Ugh, still trying to wake up. Um, strip till precision technology. What do we need? What do we need to know? Uh, how does it all work together? <clears throat> precision technology itself is kind of a bigger conversation. Uh, but before we get into it, from now on, you may call me Loretta. Yes, that is right. I am Minnesota's first trans farmer. Trans to what? I don't know yet. That will be determined. But pink bow means girl, apparently. Uh, I'm as much of a woman as Dylan or Michelle Obama. Boom. There. It's done. It's official. <coughs> to my John Deere friends out there, um, I have to say as a Massey driver, I'm very jealous. You guys now have two cans of beer to represent you. Ha <laughs> ha! I'd like to thank Bud Light for all the comedic moments they have given me because I sent that punchline to every Freightliner, Honda, Yamaha, Arctic Cat, <laughs> Polaris, Chevy, Ford, Case Age, Ford New Holland friend I have. Like, look, you finally have a representative. It, uh, <laughs> it, it just... Beyond stupid. It's beyond stupid. I'll tell you what, Budweiser. I will solve. I can save Budweiser right now. Instead of marketing to that fake lunatic, whatever that is, um, you do. You bring back the real men of genius, and uh, you you we salute you, Mister um, Budweiser. You know, bring back that commercial. And you get the guy that pretended to be trans so he could get let into the girls' fraternity at college. And then he got caught. There was many complaints against him because he was running around the house. Boing! And so, yes, we salute you, real man of genius, for pretending to be a girl and being allowed to get into the fraternity. Like, like that's the man of genius. I guarantee you market that. You put that guy on your Bud Light can and you have some fun creative commercials with that. You will have every, I don't know what current frat guys are called, but it used to be Chads and Todds for their bros. And uh, you bring back the Rick's Chads and Todds and you market to them guys. Bud Light will be selling that stuff by the keg load. <sighs> They'll be back. <laughs> They'll be back. But here's to you, VP marketing lady. <laughs> All right, strip till and precision planting, and then we'll talk more about precision equipment. <clears throat> here's the thing. Um, if you're a larger farm and you already got your precision platforms and stuff on your farm, pff, mute point. Thanks for watching. Glad you were here. Um, <laughs> but for those, I hear this a lot of times. I hear this a lot of times um, from smaller, younger farmers that are like, you know, I'd, I'd just like to get into precision, but I'm not spending the money. You know, I can't afford to do the precision. I will tell you what, I would not let lack of precision stop me from doing strip till. Our first year on strip till was manual steering. Last year's rows, eight row strip, eight row planter, worked out just fine. Crooked rows get you more to the acre. Um, so we just drove and it was a ground drive system. And I will, I will tell you what right now, if I was a smaller acre guy looking to get into strip till and didn't have the money for the precision for my first couple years, I would take and save that $15,000 and I would put that towards a better quality strip till bar. Six row strip till with markers and a good ground drive, um, uh, Seed box behind, a uh, fertilizer box behind you can cover a lot of acres very efficiently, very affordably, and do it very well. Um, it, uh, I know it sounds completely insane in this day and age to think that we could still possibly manual steer, but believe it or not, some farmers are very good at it. Um, and it, it, it works. It works every day of the week. Uh, the, the, Precision equipment and old mechanical equipment are the same. They both work great until they don't. On the mechanical side, you're dragging the machine home because you're going to spend several hours fixing a chain, taking out a bearing, uh, that kind of deal. Precision equipment is you're going to spend the next several hours sitting at the end of the field 
on the phone with somebody trying to figure out why it's not turning on. <clears throat> they, they, they are both great till they're not. Um, we, our first venture into guidance on strip till was we were um, stripping six row, planting 12 row on WAS signal. Very low accuracy. WAS is great um, for tillage, for spraying. Um, for many things, WAS is a very good driving tool. You always get a straight line. But on strip till and planting, you might always have a straight line, but it not, might not be true to the field, the direction you're trying to head, because that signal, that line can drift. <clears throat> so when you get to the other end of the field and turn around, your pass-to-pass -pass accuracy on WAS, you know, you might be doing this when you look at the, your guess rows across, you know, from row six to row one, uh, you might wide narrow wide narrow and and sometimes it just hit really good for that day um, You can really see how much wasp will drift on you is when you park at the headland <laughs> You stop for 15 minutes to get out stretch have your sandwich while you're leaning against the tire kind of deal Get back in the cab and your line might have moved two three six eight feet uh, That's wasp for you uh, Terrorist RC was the next one we moved up to, and at that time, um, <clears throat> one of the very early Terra Stars that we moved up to was a six-inch minus, and, and that was out for a year, and that was a huge leap above the wasp. Our pass to pass was so much better, and you could see it when you're planting twelve on a six-row on a six-row strip till. There was times that your right half is following that strip till machine your left half um, the strip till and planter are kind of doing this to each other and it turned out fine turned out fine <clears throat> so then the Terra stars quickly changed so then the following year it was a Terra star X and that was a two inch minus and that's kind of what we've been now for a couple years and that is phenomenal I'll tell you what these old sound guard John Deere's if you got good tie rods a tight front axle and that steering wheel holder steering on a two inch minus put that the, the old globes you know the old tractors that steered more by GPS position these can steering tractors it's not so much the globe position uh, the globe is doing more math uh, to, to correct the tractor with the old tractors you always saw I had the globe out on the nose of the hood and uh, that 8450 and that 4640 on that two inch minus I could strip plant and spray using Auto steer in an old two-wheel drive tractor. That's that's pretty dang impressive. That's pretty dang impressive When we started well, then we got to that level of strip till and uh, Now you're just now we're just driving now. We are just driving <clears throat> the other half of the precision on strip till is the box like I said if you had a six row with a ground drive box, the co-op fills it for you. You come home from work, you drop the hitch pin in, and you go all evening, and you're getting anchors done. With the precision equipment, it's nice uh, because the same thing. You come home, and you, you can control that product into the dark. Um, sometimes ground drive has problems with the stocks in a, in a reduced tillage situation like that. Stocks getting into chains, wheel slip, things like that. The precision equipment, once calibrated, makes it just that much more accurate. Uh, the other thing as we go through strip chill and soil health is each field is becoming its own thing. So we can keep the same blend. So I run... For me, I run kind of a basic blend that covers both corn and soybeans. But when you go from field to field, you're moving that rate up and down. With precision, beep, 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 changed. With the ground drive, you better keep a good log book as to what sprockets got you what rate kind of deal. It, uh, the, yeah, the precision side just helps a lot. And then you can bring in your own variable rate mapping. And, and you can build on that. You can do manual variable rate, you know, kind of stuff as you're going along. Uh, it just opens up some opportunities on the strip till. And the nice thing with it now is uh, with the precision um, 
we I got the twin bin on the hopper and so uh, my first one will be that that generic blend we'll have some calcium products some carbon products uh, some sulfur and potassium in that first hopper the second hopper on corn will be urea and um, we, that, so when we are going through the cover crop fields and you see a spot where it's bad cover crop, I can flick on some urea and, and turn it off as you enter and exit them patches. And so that, that works really nice. We got our maps. There, there's no question about when did we do that field, what did we apply to that field, because we've got them application maps as well. Uh, it's a great log book and stuff. <clears throat> Precision equipment. Oh, uh, as far as accuracy on the roll, um, you hear some guys say, well, you have to have RTK. <clears throat> Again, if you're a larger farmer, you're already on RTK because the benefits are there for you. That's not even much of a question anymore. I mean, there, there's plenty of large guys that aren't using RTK, but, but anybody's, you know, any larger farmer using RTK, that is a great tool for that farm. Um, RTK is, is a, is a powerful, very handy tool for the farm. It's expensive for a smaller farmer to get into. For me, I never got into it. When I sold technology and supported technology, and you'd have all these guys coming to you and you'd be like, you know, you had this conversation 29 times a year of, hey, I'd like to, whether it's tillage, strip till, spray, or wherever they want to start with steering, well, I better get onto RTK if I'm going to strip till. And it's like, well, you can, but it's another $2,000 unlock on the monitor, and it's another... Um, another 1500 or so extra dollars in subscription fees for that first year or just the subscription fees because you now need a cellular data plan as well and then you need a cell module in the cab for another five or six hundred dollars and so you had an almost a four thousand dollar a year extra expense in that first year to get it going and then every year after that you were weren't too far from 1500 to two grand a year in extra fees to keep the RTK going and so that that was enough to deter me to make me get that and RTK is half inch minus and right now the best Terra Star C is like an inch and a half minus so for one inch better accuracy that four thousand dollars will never pay back to me because as far as accuracy over the roll in my soil here with my strip till rigs um as long as I'm anywhere on that berm, I notice zero effect to plant stand. Uh, but I've, I've met other folks that say the minute they start veering a couple inches off of that center line of that berm, they can see it in their plant stand. So as far as accuracy needing to be on top of the row, that's up to you, your soil, and your equipment. <clears throat> now precision equipment around the farm, before, on, on, on strip-till side, let me finish this point. Strip-till side, um, you know, I say $15,000. And, and I'm sure a lot of people are like, I ain't spending that kind of money. You kind of are. Um, yep, you can get the monitor for five grand. The monitor for five grand. A, a high horsepower, you know, in command 1,200 from an egg leader. And... Um, for about five-ish grand. I don't know what price, but last time I was selling them was 47 something. But then you got a couple grand on the globe. You got unlocks and subscription fees. You got power harnessing, harnessing to the strip till. You got the module for the strip till. And then the steering itself is, is going to be another four to five grand minimum, uh, depending on what platform you're on. Uh, could be six, seven grand, um, depending on what, what tractor you're trying to steer and what solution you're using to steer it. And so, yeah, that monitor is, is well under a half, roughly third of the cost to get going into steering. <clears throat> so you can buy an old used Versa that can easily do steering and product control, um, and you can get them, you know, 2,500 bucks. <sighs> Find a good used globe. Um, it's just the steering would be hard to find a good used steering. 
precision equipment in general, almost everybody had the same story. Almost everybody used to have the old loop electronics or a micro track or a Raven switch box in their cab. Then they had a planeter monitor, then maybe some other type of 12 volt rheostat controller for something on the planter or a different monitor for something else. And you're just kind of clustered up cab. Everybody started steering because they wanted a little bit of steering for some tillage because they were throwing their dad in the tillage tractor or the guy doing tillage. It allowed him to kind of watch the implement better. But for tillage, it seems to be a common spot where everybody kind of started five, ten years ago with the auto steering. And then it just took off from there. They see the benefits of auto steering for something as simple as tillage. And it's like, that was really nice. How do we get that for our planting and spraying? And then you're like, wow, that, that precision equipment really ran my sprayer good. How do I get that on my planter? And, uh, and that's why I like Ag Leader because Ag Leader, uh, for me, when I was selling products, Ag Leader had the best support. Bar none, no questions asked. Trimble makes great products. Raven makes great products. They both had good support. Ag Leader was just that much better. And as far as creating a platform for across the farm, if you're going to buy precision equipment just for strip till or just for your sprayer or just for some tillage, you need to be thinking five, ten years down the road as to where am I going to be with this? Because if you buy just them introduction model type stuff that can just do guidance, they're a light bar with a map, um, they're worth nothing in a couple years. You can't trade them in. The dealer don't want them. You buy the high horsepower monitor and the, the steering... The difference between cheap steering at 12 grand for a complete kit to get your strip chill up and running, 12 grand for a cheap kit versus 15 grand for the premium kit, well, that cheap monitor, by the time you unlock the multi product and the swath control and some of the other things, you're now up to almost the point of buying that premium monitor that came all unlocked that can do the advanced seed monitoring, that can do a few more things, has a little more horsepower, a little larger screen uh, than that smaller monitor. Um, that's another thing, the swath control. I forgot to talk about the swath control on strip till. <clears throat> that's up to your creativity. If you want row by row control, then you can do that. Um, that, that is, that, yep, that the option is there. It's just what level do you want to take it? Where with ground drive, it's a little more difficult. And, and it kind of depends on what hopper and, and air delivery system you're using uh, as to what level as well of swath control. But with the air system we have, the single tube off the Borgalt, it wouldn't take a whole lot of creativity. And I could have row by row swath control um, on, on that strip till where we have a lot of fields that you're coming into the headland rows at a weird angle and... Uh, that, that would be pretty dang slick, to be honest with you. That'd be pretty slick. <laughs> but yeah, so the precision side, think of where you're going to be down the road. So if you're buying this platform for the strip till, you could start with an in-command in 800, save a couple grand up front, and then down the line, that in-command 800, you can either trade it in because it has real value. You can either sell it or trade it in. Uh, or you're going to start to see the benefits and then um, you eventually have the, the 1200 in your planter tractor for the advanced seed monitoring to control your seed and your liquid drives and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, I, you just got to think ahead on this precision equipment. I, I, I've seen it 29 times um, where, where people get into it cheap or try to get into it cheap and it costs them more money in the long run. I'm just telling you, after dealing with technology, it, it you're, you're cheaper in the long run to spend the money up front for the good stuff, but don't let that be the deterrent from you getting into strip till. Start strip tilling. If that's where you want to go and that's what you want to be doing, you figure it out. Markers uh, can replace a lot of precision and, and help you get going. And so guys, that's enough rambling, and uh, thank you very much for watching.